someone sent this to me. I don't know if it's going to be remotely interesting, but it sounds interesting, right? Mastermind of South Africa's biggest pyramid scheme in history ordered to pay R63.6 billion. Now, I don't know what that means. How much money is that in something I know? 3.5 billion. What, $3.5 billion? Mirror Trading International. How have I never heard of this if it's that big? The CEO, Johan Steinberg, has been ordered to pay close to $3.5 billion in restitution and penalties in the United States. Of course, it's the US that's got him. How long has he been operating this for that he's owing $3.5 billion? The Commodities Future Trading Commission, the CFTC, announced the ruling late on Thursday. Judge Lee Yeckel of the US District Court for the Western District of Texas entered an order of default judgment and permanent injunction against Cornelius... <laughs> He's even got a scammer name. Cornelius Johannes Steinberg of Stellenbosch, Western Cape, Republic of South Africa, it said. I feel like I've just read something out the line, The Witch in the Wardrobe or something, some fantasy novel. This dude's got an absolutely fantastic name, and he's from Stellenbosch. I don't know why this is funny to me. I'm, I'm a child. So a default judgment, as far as I'm aware, means, means that it's done without him coming to, to the US. He's, he's not in court. He's not defending himself, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's the case. So the order requires Steinberg to pay $1.7 billion in restitution to defrauded victims and $1.7 billion in civil monetary penalty, which is the highest monetary penalty ordered in any CFTC case. Oh man, they've slapped this motherfucker with the book. I assume this is also prison time, right? You can't owe $3.4 billion in the US and not go to prison. Unless you're a bank, of course, or somebody working uh, for a hedge fund. This action is also the largest fraudulent scheme involving Bitcoin. Oh, oh baby, we got them. We, we, every scam now, everything, it's always cryptocurrency. I read this, I thought it was going to be like one of those, oh, if you invest in our program, you know, you buy workers, that's what they call them, but it's it's bots essentially. Oh, they trade Forex for you and things like that, and, and it generates returns. And of course, it never does because it's a Ponzi scheme. But of course, it's Bitcoin. MTI was a Bitcoin-based network marketing scam that began in South Africa and drew in members worldwide. It's amazing to me how many of these exist. And I am like in the sphere of, of people who would hear about stuff like this. Not all of them, of course, because it'd be impossible. But it's just amazing to me how you hear of these like once every couple of weeks, sometimes for millions of dollars, sometimes for tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. And yet there's still more and more going on that you, you don't hear about until they get caught. There's thousands of these going on across the globe and they're earning so much fucking money, man. So the Western Cape High Court declared it an unlawful scheme in a ruling handed down on Wednesday. Acting High Court Judge Alma DeWet, she just wetted this man up as well, called it a pyramid and a Ponzi type scheme in her ruling. MTI promised to grow members Bitcoin with monthly yields averaging 10%. Where have we heard this one before? This is hilarious as well because this just reads like FTX or Celsius or any of these fucking things. Which when you think about it, right, when I'm talking about these massive, massive Ponzi schemes and how you never hear about them, we did hear about these companies for years in cryptocurrency in the West. They literally bought stadiums, like sponsored stadiums, sponsored esports teams, sponsored sports teams, had mainstream celebrities recording endorsements for them on national television, were at the Super Bowl, things like that. We saw them, they were right in front of our eyes and they were multi-billion dollar Ponzi schemes. So it just goes to show, like these can exist anywhere at any time. And we only find out, even if they look sketchy as fuck, which offering anyone like multiple percent guaranteed return on any investment is, that is the hallmark of a scam. Because anyone will tell you, that in and of itself is like a, an indicator that somebody's trying to scam you because no investment promises returns by definition because they, they aren't guaranteed returns. Like if you're going to buy Apple stock, Apple doesn't turn around and say, buy our stock, it's going to go up 10% month on month or something like that, because that's a scam. Like there's no guarantee that's going to happen. And everybody knows this. But then when these crypto programs are like, oh yeah, guaranteed 14% APY, no one bats an eye. It's fucking mad. I assume people are batting eyes now, but it, it's not going to stop. It's going to continue. Members could also obtain substantial bonuses by recruiting more people into the scheme. Yeah, yeah, of course. Add that pyramid element in there. 
Sources with knowledge of MTI's liquidation have told my broadband that over 46,000 Bitcoin flowed through the scheme. Using the current Bitcoin price of R554,000, that values the pyramid scheme at nearly 25.5 billy. According to the liquidator's court papers, when MTI imploded, there was supposed to be 22,222.548 Bitcoin in its account, around 12.3 billion. How much actually was there? This makes it South Africa's biggest pyramid or Ponzi scheme in history. The infamous Cryon Ponzi scheme was valued at around 1.5 billion in 2009, while Travel Ventures International was reportedly a 4 billion pyramid scheme. The value of AfroCrypt is disputed. What's an AfroCrypt? Is this another big... Oh, here's the Bitcoin Brothers. Rise and fall of South Africa's R54 billion Bitcoin Brothers. That's another rabbit hole, I guess. 20-month trading results. Passive, passive aggressive and aggressive. Sounds like crypto investors. <laughs> is that what they're describing? Chainalysis named MTI the biggest cryptocurrency scam of 2020. Yeah, because you can't put it into 2022, can you? Or 2023, because we've had some fucking huge ones in those two years. MTI made headlines in September 2020 when a group calling itself Anonymous ZA exploited vulnerabilities in the scheme's poorly coded website. Together with a My Broadband investigative journalist and community members, the group exposed the inner workings of MTI. Oh, so these people actually were on the ground uh, at this investigation. Cool. In mid-December 2020, Steinberg disappeared while traveling in Brazil and MTI collapsed. So we just did what all these motherfuckers do. They, they just vanish. It's the same thing with that one coin. The woman boarded a plane. It was supposed to land in Greece and then nobody ever saw her ever again. She's on the FBI and the Interpol's like top 10 most wanted list for cyber crimes and just nobody knows where she is. They repeatedly raid her ex-husband's house, I believe in Germany, and they do believe that she's basically just had loads of cosmetic surgery done and she's out there somewhere, especially because recently um, there was a headline where due to the recent rule changes in England about owning property, not in your name, but in a company's name, I think it was something to do with like Russian oligarchs or something. They were cracking down on it. So they were making people do some governmental process to to let them know that they were still owners of this this property or something like that. I can't remember the details, which they did a couple of months ago, which means that somebody either pretending to be her or somebody on her behalf was doing these things to uh, lay claim still to these properties that, that are owned on her behalf. Liquidation proceedings were instituted shortly after that. Steinberg was arrested in Brazil on December 29th, 2021, almost exactly a year after you first went missing. You fucking goofed, mate. You goofed. The Texas court ruling stems from a complaint the CTFC laid on 30th of June 2022 against MTI and Steinberg. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name, but that's what we're going with. We're, we're, we're too deep now. Had the CTFC's original application been successful, it could potentially have seized all the money currently in the MTI estate. However, MTI's liquidators applied for the South African liquidation to be recognized as the foreign main processing under the US bankruptcy code. Their application was granted to liquidator Siobhan's Badenhorst St. Clair Cooper on 18th of March 2023. Why does... Is this a company or is this a person's name? Because why does everyone's name in this fucking article sound like they're a Game of Thrones character or something? They're, they just have the best names. Therefore, it's noteworthy that the CFTC only obtained the 3.5 billion restitution and penalty order against Steinberg, not the estate of MTI. The CFTC said its litigation continues against MTI, which means that this is not even all the money that uh, they're going to row. It is unclear how the CFTC hopes to extract the money out of Steinberg as he appears to be detained in a Brazilian prison. Oh, oh boy. If you were going to pick a prison, you'd probably pick like somewhere in Scandinavia or something where they treat people like human beings. America would probably be quite far down on that list as well. Brazil would definitely be down on that list. The CFTC cautioned victims that restitution orders might not recover lost money because the wrongdoers may not have sufficient funds or assets. Yeah. The order finds that Steinberg, the founder and CEO of Mirror Trading International Proprietary Limited, a company currently in liquidation in the Republic of South Africa, is liable for fraud in connection with retail foreign currency forex transactions, fraud by an associated person of a commodity pool operator, registration violations, and failure to comply with CPO regulations. Additionally, under the order, Steinberg is permanently enjoined from engaging in conduct that violates the Commodity Exchange Act, as charged, registered with the CFTC, and trading in any CFTC-regulated markets. So you, you're barred. You're banned from doing anything relating to selling commodities. 
The CFTC thanked South African Financial Sector Conduct Authority, the Financial Services Commission of Belize and the Texas State Securities Board, the Alabama Securities Commission, North Carolina Secretary of State Security. Mate, they're just fucking thanking everyone. Give everyone a pat on the back. Oh, so this is a an order from Florida, Southern District of Florida. Why do I always hear Southern District of something, but I never hear Northern District when talking about laws? Like, whenever I read anything about New York, um, any of the federal government in New York doing anything, it's always the Southern District. This is the Southern District of Florida. Oh, to be fair, this is the Western District of Texas. So I guess still not the Northern. Are the Northern District's just fucking useless. Either way... Uh, I, don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. That's this one, South Africa's biggest pyramid scheme. This dude's going to be in prison for a long time, uh, I imagine. I just wonder how he got caught in Brazil. I really do wonder. Because I've never heard of this or this guy. I wonder if just everybody was looking for him. But there we go. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll leave a link to the article in the video description if you want to go check it out. Really good write-up and just generally an interesting story. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace out.